Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine, and today we are going to begin Chapter 4, which is about the arrangement of electrons and atoms. So we're going to begin with a review of atomic models, and you'll recall that Democritus was the first one to mention that matter is made of atoms. Uh, Dalton was next on the scene, and he said that atoms are solid and indivisible. He had an atomic theory as well. And then Thompson um, did the uh, cathode ray tube experiment and discovered electrons, for which he won a Nobel Prize in 1906. And then Rutherford uh, did the gold foil experiment and discovered the nucleus and protons, and he uh, received the Nobel Prize in 1908. These guys were no slouches. So Chadwick discovered the neutron, and he received a Nobel Prize in 1935, and Millikan, who calculated the charge and mass of the electron, also won a Nobel Prize in 1923. So now we have to talk a little bit about light and atomic spectra. So up until the 17th century, our understanding of light was very limited, and in Newton's time, people thought that light consisted of particles, but then as we approached the 1900s, most scientists believed that light was made up of waves. So what is the wave description of light? So we're talking about electromagnetic radiation, which is the form of energy that exhibits wave-like behavior as it travels through space. And when we talk about the electromagnetic spectrum, we're talking about all the forms of electromagnetic radiation that exist in our universe. And it turns out that the speed of all electromagnetic radiation in our universe is a constant. So all electromagnetic radiation in our universe uh, travels at a constant speed, and it's given uh, the variable C, and that speed is 3.0 times 10 to the 8th, meters per second. It's speed, so again, meters per second. So here is a, um, a slide that shows electromagnetic radiation and the entire spectrum from gamma rays all the way down to short, short wave radio, AM radio, and the like. And I want to point out that there's this little sliver in the center, and that is the visible region, so the only part that we can perceive with our eyes. And I like to point out that that visible spectrum, so here you're seeing the rainbow from red through violet, we measure it typically in nanometers, and a nanometer is 10 to the minus 9 meter, or a billionth of a meter. And you'll see that visible light is roughly 350 to about 800 nanometers. So when we're talking about waves, there are specific properties that we talk about. The amplitude of a wave is its height. The wavelength is the distance between the crests of two adjacent waves. And we use this funny Greek letter, lambda, for wavelength. And it's measured in meters. And then we talk about the frequency of a wave, and that is the number of wave cycles, complete waves, that pass a point per unit time, and we use the Greek letter nu for that. And you'll notice that the um, unit is inverse seconds because you're talking about wave cycles per second. And frequency and wavelength are inversely related, so that means as frequency increases, wavelength decreases, and as wavelength increases, frequency decreases. So according to the wave model of light, again, um, I like to point out, so a complete wave would be one full cycle, and we're going to call this line the origin. So typically um, what we talk about is the amplitude, which is the height of a wave above the origin. And then we talk about crests, and that's the portion of the wave that's above the origin, and the trough is the portion of the wave below the origin. And then we talk about the wavelength, and the wavelength is 
the length between the same point on two adjacent waves. And so we talk about it from crest to crest. So according to this wave model of light, there's an equation that we can use where C is the speed of light and it is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So since these two things multiplied together equal a constant, remember the speed of light is a constant, then they have to be inversely related if when you multiply them together you get a constant. And remembering that C, the speed of light, is a constant and it's 3.0 or 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So then we need to talk about the photoelectric effect. And this was something that was observed in the 1800s. People talked about the photoelectric effect. And it refers to the emission of electrons from a metal when light is shined on it. And it was uh, observed that it takes a specific frequency of light to make a metal eject a photoelectron. So again, different metals took different frequencies of light in order to make that happen. And you'll see that different colors of light had a different effect. So the wave model would predict that light of any frequency should cause the emission of an electron. And this phenomenon that people were seeing, the photoelectric effect, did not fit the wave model of light. So a number of physicists at this time were trying to explain what was going on with the photoelectric effect. So this fellow, Max Planck, proposed in 1900 that objects emit energy in small discrete packets that he referred to as quanta. And a quantum of energy, singular, is the minimum quantity of energy that can be lost or gained by an atom. And he proposed the following relationship, that E, the energy of one of these photons, is equal to H, a constant, times nu, the frequency. And he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1918 for this theory of quanta of energy, packets of energy. So when we're talking about the energy of photons, the energy of an individual photon is directly proportional to its frequency according to this equation, where E is the energy, H is a constant, and it's called Planck's constant, and the Greek letter nu stands for frequency. So energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency. Planck's constant is equal to 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. And what that means is the greater the frequency a photon has, the greater the energy, or the lower the frequency, the lower the energy. So directly related. So um, the particle wave duality is, um, I mentioned earlier that people were trying to figure out whether light was made up of particles or waves. So in 1905, Albert Einstein expanded on Planck's theory by introducing the idea that electromagnetic radiation has a dual wave particle nature. So it's a wave and it's a particle. So particle wave duality. So light can be considered as a constant stream of particles and we call the particles photons. So a photon is a particle of electromagnetic radiation that has zero mass but carries this so-called quantum of energy. And I should note that Einstein was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1921 for this theory, the theory that light is made up of photons and for his explanation of the photoelectric effect. So Einstein explained the photo photoelectric effect in this way. Electromagnetic radiation is absorbed by matter only in whole numbers of photons. So in order for an electron to be ejected from the metal surface, the electron must be struck by a photon that had that minimum energy required to knock it loose.
So the energy of a photon is equal to h nu, where h is still Planck's constant and nu is still the frequency. So with this um, explanation of the photoelectric effect, I am going to end for now. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.